Hello fellow guitar geeks, it's new guitar day and uh, Fender have sent me a guitar to unbox and show to you. It is from the new Vintage 2 series, the Vintage sequel, the Vintage Strikes Back, the Vintage uh, um, Electric Boogaloo? Yeah, anyway, um, I'm going to share the boxing unboxing experience with you by strapping on this GoPro and, um, and doing that. But before we do, this is the, the tweed case. And um, uh, it's actually not the first time I've unboxed it. I actually unboxed it at a friend's house the other day to sort of show him and try, try through the amps. Um, and I tried through a Vox AC30 and it sounded glorious. Then I unboxed it the other day when my friend Steve came over, but now this is the first time I've unboxed it in the studio and um, we'll play it through my amps. So uh, yeah, it is a new experience, just not as new as a normal unboxing would be. Right. Oh, that's embarrassing. Okay, uh, the catch is stuck on this tweed vintage case. So, 2,000 euros is this guitar, roughly. It's an expensive guitar, and um, the catch catches. Okay, um, here we go. There it is. It's a telly. I mean, what can you say about a Telecaster? It is a black top with butterscotch nitro finish, and it's a 51. Um, we'll go over that in a minute. Let's just look at the case. There's the hang tags that would be on it if I hadn't unboxed it already. Here's the insides. There's some keys to unlock a case if you lock it. Don't ever lock your Fender case. Yummy, yummy silica gel stuff. What's in here? We've got a lacquer finishes, precautions, and care. Nice, because it's a nitro finish. Then we've got a Fender certificate of authenticity. It is a real American Fender. Instructions on how to play guitar. Uh, oh, how it was built in black and white. And um, and what happens to you the day you start playing guitar? That is, people carry you uh, to shows. What else is in here? Oh, uh, ashtray because it's a telly. So we've got a, a telly ashtray um, that pops on the bridge. If, if anyone wonders, uh, I'm not going to be putting it on because it stops you muting the strings. A little percussion tool and some stickers. One for the pit guard if you're going to stick it out on display because this came direct from Fender to me and one that says Fender in case you forget who built the guitar. So far I'm, I'm, hello, I'm not that impressed, there it is, with the case because if I just pop it back in for a second it is just floating up and down a little bit. There's nothing stopping the guitar apart from the neck and the body. Now it is a Telecaster, which means it's fairly indestructible, but if it were any other sort of guitar, it might not fare so well. So the case is more a, a decorative ornament in my opinion. Um, I can take this GoPro off now, I think. So there it is, the Vintage 2 Telecaster from Fender, covered in nitro stuff. I don't even have the spec sheet, so there's gonna be specs online that you'll know that I don't, because Fender sent this to me ahead of release. Now, it is a 51 Tele, um, which means that it's got not the biggest neck like my 52. This is my custom shop. Come here, baby. That's my custom shop with a huge 1056 neck on and just quickly comparing the two, which I've been doing, um, which I will do, sorry. That is um, the new, no, that's the old one, the Redux one, and that's the new one. Mirror image on the screen up there. What else we got? We've got... If you're not familiar with tellies, we've got this three-way switch just here. So we've got bridge, middle, neck, we've got volume, and we've got tone. The pickups, I have no idea what they are because uh, I don't know the specs. They didn't send them to me. They didn't send me a spec sheet, but we're going to hear them. Uh, the neck feels a little sticky because the nitro. It needs to be played in a little bit, maybe even a little bit of sanded off. Dare I say, do that to a 2,000 euro guitar. Um, let's tune it up and see how it tunes and how it performs in the old tuning department. Tuning experience is pretty nice. Um, they are vintage tuners, uh, they're not staggered in any way. I guess the whole point of this guitar is pretending that it was built in 1951 and you're just taking it off the shelf in 1951 and this is what you get. It smells, it smells like an old cupboard like it's been kept in some kind of cupboard for a while. It's a sweet smell. How's it, how's it smell compared to my custom? That one smells musty, the old one. The, sorry, the not the old one, the new one that's supposed to be old. And this one, which is supposed to be old, but new, so new, you know what I mean, right? Am I talking sense? Anyway.
it's quite loud, unplugged. That's a good sign. Um, let's try it through the Fender Deluxe Reverb. That's the neck bridge. Right, um, it's a very pleasant playing experience, apart from this neck. This neck is rather sticky. The sounds are gorgeous. Let's try it with the Moxie uh, from Wampler, the TS-10 um, homage. Overall, that is a telly player's telly. I've noticed something weird about it. It's got these, these screws just here. I don't know if that's in focus on the camera. I think it is. But look at the pit guard screws. Um, they are flathead screws, which is odd. They're vintage spec, but is that taking vintage spec too far? I mean, no, not really, because if you want a vintage telly, then this is the kind of guitar you should be buying. It's got the right name on the headstock. It's the right color. Um, it feels the right sort of shape and it sounds like a telly so far, but um, I don't know. I, I, I would swap those out for Philips head, you know, the cross heads. That's just a, that's a step too far for me. Anyway, I'm going to play an E-shaped e bar chord all the way up the neck just to see how playable it is and um, how the setup is because I've done nothing to the setup. I've invented a new chord because it's that. It plays wonderful, there's no, no buzzing or anything. I would never play that bar chord up there. But that's about as far as I can get. Doesn't sound so great up there. That's my big sausage fingers, though. Yeah, ever so slightly, I'm bending it out of tune slightly. It's nice and warm on that neck. Um, and then quite toppy and mid-rangey and twangy, as we should say, on the, on the, on the bridge. Um, a lot of you have been asking for me to weigh guitars, which is odd because guitars are made out of wood, right? And wood weighs different depending on which piece of wood you have. And I can't... Ah, oh, there it is. So, particularly with budget guitars, which this is not, 
they can weigh a lot of different weights. I'm hoping that with a guitar this expensive, Fender have somewhat um, reduced the difference between the lightest guitar and the heaviest guitar. Let's find out how heavy it is in kilos and pounds. So, uh, in ounces, no, kilos, right, here we go. In kilos, this Mama Jamma is, 3.385. Let's compare that to my custom shop, which is a custom shop kind of feels about the same, maybe lighter. 3.5. 3. So there's not much in it. There's not much in it at all. And just for um, stuffs and giggles, let's try the Harley Benton, which is coming in at around 150 euros. This is the TE62, which is a obviously 60s. Or was it 52? That is coming in at. Oh, hang on. I've accidentally locked it. Right, there we go. Now, this TE. Oh, I don't know. Is it 52 or 62? Must be 52, right? That's 4.6. So that's that's heavier. But it doesn't feel it. I must be getting stronger. Right, I'm gonna have to play it some more, but hopefully that has satiated the people that like to have guitar weights. And if that was absolutely useless information, I apologize. Um, I can't even do specs, because Fender didn't send me the specs. I can tell you that I'm gonna be doing a series of videos on this, and not like a series that you wanna watch all of them, but I'm going to you know, compare it to my custom shop. I'm going to certainly take it apart and have a look inside and I'm absolutely going to probably relic it. Yeah, um, but so far, it's exactly where that price of guitar should be. I need to play it more. That's the Moxie, so we've got a fair amount of drive on there. position might be my favorite of those three. Yeah, it's, uh, this is going to sound obvious, but it's like the neck mixed a little bit with the bridge. But that's not always the case when you have a three-way switch guitar. Um, and you have a three-way. Uh, yeah, it's not always the case. Sometimes it just doesn't sound right. It sounds weird. That means I think that Fender have matched the, matched the pickups nicely. Uh, I'm looking for stuff that I don't like because so far, I think this guitar is great if you're looking for a vintage telly. There are so many options on the market these days, so many options, and yet we all tend to gravitate back to the big F when we want to. Um, I mean, the Harley Benton, this one here, is, is phenomenal. It won't sound the same, and I think I will put it in a video with that and my custom shop just to show uh, some differences, because the custom shop was definitely twice the price of this. Now, let's check some different pedals. I know what you're thinking. You're searching through YouTube looking for sound samples of the new American Vintage 2 Tele, and you think, I need to hear it through a rat style paddle. Well, lucky you, I have one. <laughs> Is it working? Yes, it is. Right. Let's put it on classic mode and filter at the top, volume in the middle, and see what it sounds like. Filters the different way on this one.
There is very little difference seemingly between, oh, that's nice and springy. That is a springy switch. So you've got your Telecaster springy switch. This has got one. That's nice. I really enjoy that. That's, I'm probably too excited or more excited than I should be at least. Never too excited. Um, yeah, that, that middle pickup setting and that neck pickup setting seems very similar when using a rat star distortion. <laughs> I keep feeling there's a spider on me. I think one of my hairs is falling out. Um, I'm wrong, but there is that really good balance, a great balance of neck with a little bit of bridge, but the middle seems certainly more neck currently. And the bridge is th thrashy. <laughs> Right, that's enough rat for now. Let's try um, some fuzz. There we go. This is, I, I don't know if it's pointless, but it certainly is fun. So let's do bridge first. <laughs> I dare say that a telly might be, I think it is my favorite guitar for everything, you know? Like you can get Les Paul kind of sounds out of it, you can get telly kind of sounds out of it, you, you can almost get Strat sounds out of it, but if I wanted one guitar, it would be a telly, probably. That's the old man's choice, right? Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if this would be it. So far, everything just seems to work, you know? like. It's a lot of money, so therefore it's a lot of money to invest in a guitar. However, if you want something that just seems to work, this just seems to work. Let's try it. Um, I'll try some power chords with this big muff. It's a great combination. I mean, the Fender Deluxe Reverb just hiding behind the pedal, the pedal, and this new telly, that's a great tone. Um, I just, just to give you an indication, let's plug the Harley Benton in and show you what that sounds like. In fact, not just show you, but show me as well, because should we be spending two grand? I don't know. Let's have a listen. Right, so that was Bridge, and here we go. Right. Did I just prove that you don't need to buy a Fender Telecaster? You could just buy a Harley Benton. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a discussion for another video, but what I will say in this video is that this is a phenomenal guitar for less than 200 euros. The playing experience on the Fender is nicer. The strings and everything, the strings, five bucks of strings, 10 bucks of strings. Um, the strings and tuning experience on the Harley Benton is noticeably less responsive and less enjoyable and certainly less uh, reliable than what I would hope this to be. This feels like you plug it in and as I said, everything just works. However, that sound, the Harley Benton had higher, higher outputs and yeah, with a fuzz pedal, it's like, you know, everybody's good looking in the dark. Is that is that a thing people say? Uh, it's, beauty is... Everyone's beautiful in the dark. So I'm sort I'm sure that someone said that. I mean, everyone's beautiful anyway. Of course, you're beautiful. If no one's ever told you that, then you are. You are. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I may have just proven that I don't need uh, a Fender, and you don't need a Fender to have a good telly. But if you want the name and you want something that's vintage spec, Fender have certainly brought back something that I think is is a great telly machine. Uh, let's do, I've got a Vox copper drive down there. 
Now this is my first experience with this pedal. So um, let's see what it does. Uh, bright switch is off, I guess. Let's put that in the middle. Um, let's put everything at 12. Yeah, the tuning experience is what you'd expect from a very expensive guitar. Never tried that pedal, first experience, fantastic. A um, little bit too muffled on the neck, so I'm gonna switch it to the middle position, which I rarely do on a telly, and find out what that sounds like. <laughs> I know I'm having fun on a guitar because I suddenly get all excited and try to do stuff up there, which I, I, I'm not really capable of. But great pedal. What a pedal. That's a, a Marshall. Um, I want to say JCM 800, but let's say Marshall Rock in a box. That neck pickup. Mmm. <laughs> Yeah, that is fun. I mean, the, obviously the pedal's doing a lot of the heavy lifting there, but um, the guitar's fun. Let's try it through the, the SV, hang on, to the SV20 Marshall. So a Marshall through a Marshall. Okay, now it's too bright. That's the, that's the Marshall, there's a super bright amp. Pedal doing a lot of the work, fantastic Vox. However, this telly is a pure joy to play and it should be for the money, whatever that money is. Again, I, I don't know exactly how much this costs because I've got it before release. Um, my guess is 2000 euros. <sighs> it's gonna upset a lot of people because I bet there's lots of videos when this guitar is released. However, uh, I'm gonna come back and give you my absolute full review really soon. However, however, I've said however a lot. Um, first impressions are that that is a cracking guitar and has all the vintage spec that you could possibly want. Looks the right color. Um, some, some things that I don't like. Right, some things that I don't like. Let's just get it over the pedal there, right. The ferrules there, that, I need to move the pedal out of the way, hang on. The ferrules are not exactly, I mean they're clean, but I've seen cleaner. You can kind of see just here that there's a, if I'm really being picky. Then it's so vintage spec, we've got the flathead screws, which kind of seems silly, but if you want vintage spec, then you want vintage spec. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna come back and do a video with this versus the custom shop, and also include the Harley Benton as well, because that's 150, the custom shop's about 4,000, and I think this new Vintage 2 is about 2,000. 
So yeah, I think that's going to be a worthwhile video. I hope this has you know, wet your whistle a little, and um, I've had a blast playing it. I lost myself several times in this video, and if you've been following my channel, then you'll know that I've had some issues uh, being excited by guitars recently, and I'm back. And yeah, there's nothing like a good Telecaster to make you want to play guitar. So yeah, thank you Fender for sending this out for my review. If you found the video useful, then you can subscribe or leave a comment or, or thumbs up if you fancy. Any form of engagement will help me. You know, then I can help you again in the future. So if you've got questions, stick them in the comments section and I will address them in a future video. There are more ways to support the channel, of course. These people right here are my patrons from Patreon. And if you want to join that list of on-screen guitar gods, I'll work on that, then, um, then there's a link in the video description for you to support me on Patreon. Also, there are affiliate links, just so you know. The links that you click uh, may be affiliates, so I may earn something back from that at no cost to you. It does not change what I say in the videos. And finally, to prove that you've made it this far in the video and you are a member of that prestigious elite which is known as the End of the Video Club, when you comment down below asking me your questions or whatever, please also include the phrase Vintage 2! Electric Boogaloo! And that'll let me know that you watched this part or you're really good at guessing. Thanks for doing that. Time for me to love you and leave you. There's a subscribe button and stuff like that and all the buttons that you can choose if you want to or just, just go and play guitar. Whatever you're doing, make sure you have some fun while you're doing it. Unless it's, you know, unless you've got a really serious job, then you probably shouldn't be smiling if you're doing serious stuff. But have fun afterwards. See you soon. Bye.